Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 43, we'll take a look at the microservices orchestration pattern and really see one of the most effective ways of doing orchestration within microservices. Now, on lesson 23, we talked about the differences between orchestration and choreography. And we saw with orchestration, it was almost like an orchestra where we've got different players doing their own thing. For example, the violin and the baritone here. And you can see that the request, get all data for customer one, two, three, requires an orchestration to get all the information across multiple microservices. And we talked about the need of some sort of conductor in front of that orchestra. That's the orchestrator. Let's actually see where that might occur in this lesson. Now, one place it might occur is in the gateway, the API gateway, but let me show you the problem with that. Because as we discussed in an earlier lesson, the API gateway used in microservices is really not the same thing as an enterprise service bus. And so the gateway is great for things, for example, in microservices like security, uh, things like request ID generation to support traceability so that every request uh, going through microservices ends up getting a UUID or a GUID um, that forms that request ID that can be traced across all microservices for any given request. Uh, things like service discovery is another great thing to put in an API gateway. Uh, audit wiretaps to say every request must be audited for example. And this is a great place to, to put that inside the gateway. Um, metrics based on request times um, for a business request, not each individual microservice is another thing there. And you'll notice all of these have something in common. And that is they're all cross-cutting concerns. But since most gateways are implemented as enterprise service buses, one kind of pitfall, in my opinion, is to say, well, let's just do orchestration up there. Hmm. Well, let me ask you this. See that piece of code there? All, all, all of those, those boxes are a piece of code. Um, there is some complexity associated with orchestration. Um, the first is multicasting. In other words, if I've got 10 services to call, uh, can I call all of those in parallel or do I have to call the first eight and then take some of that information as input into the other ones? Uh, what if something times out in the middle of all that orchestration? Uh, can I just keep polling and return what I can, or do I really need all the results accumulated? And the third piece, who owns the contract? And when I say the contract, the actual JSON object that's returned from that get all customer data. You see, the gateway would own all these things. And when in a microservices ecosystem, that starts causing problems. Let me show you why. Um, my recommendation and advice is not to put that orchestration up in a gateway. For example, if I make a breaking change, so here's some code for the wish list, for example. See that wish list microservice. If I make a breaking change to that, in other words, a breaking change requiring a change in the callers of that, I need to change both of these flows within the gateway because the contract is also up there. And now when I go to deploy, unfortunately, I need to deploy the entire gateway. And so this will kill an effective deployment pipeline within microservices. And so the question remains then, so then how do we do orchestration? What is the best way to do this? Let me show you um, one of the most popular techniques of handling orchestration. And this is the microservices orchestration pattern. Uh, what we would do to handle orchestration is add another separate, separately deployed microservice. It's fine-grained, it's single-purpose, it's in a container, and it does one thing really well. It knows how to orchestrate the request, get all customer data. You see, these orchestrators now have a place for ownership, not only of that code for that request, but also the business model. In other words, the contract or that JSON request or XML that I'm passing up to the client requests. And so this becomes the new endpoint, basically for that get all customer data. And these orchestrators, we're not trying to rebuild an ESB, but these are usually dedicated to specific requests. So if I had 10 different kind of requests that required an orchestration of multiple microservices, I would have 10 corresponding microservices orchestrators. Now, let me show you the power of these orchestrators. First of all, now I have an owner 
of that model, of that business model. And so there is a form of a bounded context here. The code associated with knowing how to get demographics, wish lists, and preferences, and accumulating and aggregating those contracts is now owned by this orchestrator. Now watch what happens. If I make a change to this orchestrator to say, well, mm, I think you misunderstood. I really didn't want preferences. All I have to do is make the change in that one microservice and now hot deploy. There's no gateway or ESB to have to deal with. And as a matter of fact, if we do apples to apples, if I make a breaking change to wish list, oh, that's going to require a change to that orchestrator. Mm, so now we're in the same boat, but we're not. Because that's an individual microservice, I can now do a hot deploy against both of these. And so the idea of these orchestrator microservices is that it is the microservice that fronts that request to kind of like essentially aggregate or orchestrate across microservices to be able to accumulate all this data into a separate contract that's then passed up through that API call. Now, in later uh, lessons, uh, the following ones, we're going to look at two other kinds of patterns. Um, but certainly, you can go to Software Architecture Monday, uh, located on this link right here, uh, depending on where you found this video. That's where all the lessons are housed. And also, you can find out upcoming events uh, where I'm at speaking in terms of conferences and public trainings and such um, by going to the upcoming events portion of developer2architect.com. And so this has been Lesson 43, Microservices Orchestration Pattern. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and stay tuned next Monday uh, for Lesson 44, which will be taking a look at the Microservices Aggregator Pattern, a different kind of pattern of communication within microservices. Thank you so much for listening.